You're watching KCMI TV. Well, praise the Lord. Uh, let's get into the Word of God today. And um, just wanted to start off with a little bit of foundation here in the scriptures. And uh, those of you that have served the Lord for some time, this is elementary to you, but sometimes we need to just be reminded of, of the plans of God that he has for us. And uh, you you live in a, in a physical body. We can feel it, we can touch it. It's where we feel pain and, and um, all those different things. But you have, this physical body is a house. Paul talks about it. And uh, it, is, it holds, there's two men that live in it. You have an old man that's unregenerated that, that came with you at birth. And then uh, when you are born again, as Jesus was talking to Nicodemus, there's a new man that's birthed inside of you. Uh, if any man be in Christ Jesus, he is a new creature. All things pass away and all things become new. So the, the spirit man comes in second. Uh, and the intention of God is that once you are born again, that the old man, the old nature, that it never rules in your body again, but now the new man that has been created in that physical body is the man that rules. And uh, Romans, the eighth chapter, deals so much about the spirit. Um, and I love this verse. It says, but to be carnally minded or to be naturally minded, to think out of the realm of your intellect and your reasoning. He said, when you are carnally minded or you allow your natural mind to rule you, he said, it's death. It produces death but to be spiritually minded, to have the mind of the spirit is life and peace. And he said, this is why, because the natural mind is at enmity with God. One of those words is hatred. It hates God. It's because it's not subject to the laws of God, neither can it be. So then they that are in the flesh or they that have that that operate out of their natural intellect. And boy, this is the battle of the minds that we have. It says that when we operate in that natural mind, we cannot please God. Verse 14 of Romans 8 says this, So for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And so uh, I, I want to establish here as we get into this Bible study today that you have a spirit man inside of you. And uh, when you go back to the scriptures, um, I jotted down a couple of places for references. If you want to, 1 Corinthians 12, 27, and there are other verses that talk about this. Uh, it says that you and I, we are the body of Christ. And... God is teaching here, Paul is, is likening, he's using an example that Christ is in the earth, but we are his body. But it doesn't say that we are his head. We're not the head. The scripture is very plain on this. It says that Ephesians 5.23, and, and there's other verses that bear this out. It says that you and I are the body of Christ, but for that body to be complete, it has to have a head. And it says that Christ is the head of the body or he is the head of the church. And so for the spirit man to be able to function and rule in life, not only is, is there a body that, that is there, but there is the head and they're joined together. And so we know this, that the, that the, the natural body does not carry out the commands. The natural body responds and does whatever it does by the commands that come from the head. And so I wanna, I wanna talk some today about, uh, in, in Colossians or in 1 Corinthians 2.16, it, Paul said this to you and I, he said this, we have the mind of, of Christ. And I, I want to dwell on that some because 
if we have the mind of Christ, if we are the body and Christ is the head and we are led by the spirit and we are a spirit being, then you and I have the mind of Christ. And if you have the mind of Christ, then you're going to think like Jesus. This is why Jesus said, I'm going away. He said, the works that I do shall ye do also. And he said, greater works than these um, shall ye do. And so um, when, when Jesus was in the earth, the Bible declares in John, he said that, that Jesus Christ was God manifested in the flesh. So when Jesus was on the earth and he was teaching or he was doing miracles, he made this statement in John, I think it's chapter 14, he said, uh, the words that I'm speaking, they're not my words, they're not natural words, he said, but they're the works that my father has given me or the words that my father has given me. So when Jesus was in his natural body before he had been resurrected, when he would speak, he was speaking out of the mind of God. And this is why he could walk up to uh, a tomb and, and look at it being sealed and a man inside has been dead for four days. And he's not thinking in terms of, because those that were around him, See, they, they, weren't, they didn't have the mind of Christ. They would not been regenerated. And so when Jesus uh, said, roll away the stone, they're thinking in the natural mind. They're saying, Lord, don't do that because he's been dead for four days and he's already beginning to decay and, there, and he stinks. But the Lord said, no, he's asleep. See, the natural mind looked at that and said, he can't come out because he's been dead for four days and it's never been done before. But the mind of Christ looked at it and, and he's hearing what the Father is saying. And see, Jesus said this, he said, I'm not the God of the dead, but I'm the God of the living. And so the Father is saying he can come back to life. And so Jesus is operating in the mind of his father. This is why he always talked about that every, everything he did was not of his own accord, but it was what he was seeing his father do and what he was hearing his father say. And so when, um, when in the spirit being, we don't operate out of our intellect. It's, it's not up here. The spirit of Christ, the mind of Christ really is in our heart. And this is why the Bible said that to receive Christ, not only do you confess with your mouth, which comes from your intellect, but he said, you got to believe in your heart and then you shall be saved. And so when you are a spirit man, um, this is why there's so much in the scripture that talks about the heart and that out of the heart either comes life or evil things. And, and he gives a whole list of the sins that come out of the heart. And so when David was writing and uh, Jesus comes from the bloodline of David, he's the seed of David. David said this about the Lord. He said, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. In other words, the, we know the word was made flesh. So he's saying, I'm hiding Christ in my heart. Why? Because when you have the mind of Christ, and boy, this is, a, a, this is something that you got to deal with on a daily basis. You got to commit yourself to the Lord because every day your natural mind is going to try to usurp authority and begin to speak. And this is why you got to bring every thought into captivity. You cannot give place to the devil. And this is when you have the word hid in your heart. David said, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. What was the sin? It's a sin of unbelief. S unbelief is intoxicating. You start uttering unbelief, and I mean, it just, it just makes you uh, it just keeps coming out. 
And, uh, you know, when you get intoxicated, you got you start to stagger. This is why in Romans, the fourth chapter, it talks about Abraham, the father of faith. He said that he did not stagger through unbelief. He spoke through the mind of the spirit, and he was speaking things that are not as though they were. And he was declaring that God could take his loins that were dead and bring them back to life. God is looking for men and women in this hour that when there's nothing in the natural, that the, your, that your natural mind is saying it cannot be done, you say, no, I'm bringing you under the blood, and I have the mind of Christ in me. I think like Jesus. Jesus, I, I hear what the Lord is saying. Matthew 12 to 34 says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. One verse talks about, he said, they honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. See, there's a lot of people that, that speak faith, but in their heart, there's unbelief. It's not just, it's, you just cannot have intellect. You cannot have the natural mind, the natural mind of man, because he cannot comprehend the things of God. You have to walk in the realm of the spirit. When you are in the realm of the spirit, that is when you begin to declare the impossible. So uh, this is this is a scientific fact. Neurologists who who deal with the brain and how it works and the electrical impulses and the neutrons that make it up and the gray matter and the white matter and all of those different things. And the brain is divided into two uh, hemispheres. Um, they have determined and discovered that the speech nerve in the brain controls every other nerve in the brain. And this is, and, they, and they've proven this through laboratory tests with people that when a person begins to speak something, the body responds to it. And if, if the speech says, I'm cold, uh, you, you begin to get cold. Or, and and they, they, they discovered that if a person is declaring, I'm going to get sick and I don't feel well, then the body gets this command that says, I'm going to get sick, I don't feel well, and it begins to respond to that. And so uh, speech, what comes out of our mouth? This is why out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So many people sabotage their life because they walk in the natural realm. They don't have the mind of Christ. They have the mind of the old unregenerated man. And so when uh, Jesus came on the scene, we don't hear really anything about Jesus till he's 30 years old. We know at the age of 12, uh, he was increasing in wisdom and stature and that there is one instance where he is sitting and he is talking with the intellectual minds of his day at the age of 12. But he never, we don't find where he ever teaches or he is um, ever doing any of the miracles until he's the age of 30. The a significant event that took place in Jesus' life at the age of 30 was that the anointing of the Holy Spirit came on him, and the Bible says it never left. And when the Holy Spirit came on him, he is now released because he is operating only in the realm of the Spirit. Um, on the day of Pentecost, when the disciples were in the upper room, there's about 120, and they, they've been secluded in that upper room. There, When Jesus has left, he's been gone for, on the 40th day he left, and so for 10 days they're in this room, and uh, they're not preaching, they're not teaching or anything because physically Jesus is gone and they're, they're, they're not thinking like Christ. They don't have his mind yet. But in that upper room on the 10th day, the Bible says that suddenly there came a sound from heaven and cloven tongues or divided tongues of fire begin to set upon this 120 men and women. And this is what happened. They begin to speak 
with new tongues. You know what happened? They were given the mind of Christ. I, I want to encourage you that every day when you get up in the morning that you begin to declare, Lord Jesus, give me your mind. Give me your thoughts. Uh, he whose mind is stayed on the Lord, the Bible says, shall have perfect peace. And the enemy is coming after you, and the way that he comes after you is to tell he only speaks death. His mind is the mind of death. And this is why uh, when uh, I think it's, um, you see here, We know that uh, verse, this is in Romans 8, um, says, Likewise, the Spirit helpeth our infirmities, for we do not know what we pray as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered, because he searches the hearts. And I love this. He knows what the mind of the Spirit is. See, we don't really think too much about that the Holy Spirit is a person and he has a mind. And when the day of Pentecost happened and these men and women were baptized with the Holy Ghost, see, they were already the body of Christ, but they couldn't function because any individual whose mind is gone cannot function. And they were in that room for 10 days, not able to function because the mind of Christ had not yet come. But when the Holy Ghost fell, the mind of the Spirit, the same mind that was in Christ, that same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead shall also quicken our mortal bodies. It dwells in us. And when they received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you know what happened? They were given a new language. Uh, I think it's in Acts, maybe the first chapter that says, tarry you in Jerusalem till you be endued with power from on high. But I'm going to tell you what, the Holy Ghost is not just the gift of power. It is the gift of language. And what Christ wants us to have is the mind that he has that when we speak, hallelujah, we are speaking out of the mind of Christ. Because the language of Christ never, never speaks death, never speaks unbelief, that it only speaks life and that more abundantly. And so uh, when we receive the, the power of the Holy Ghost, we are receiving a language, the gift of language that begins to articulate. It's one thing to think it, but it's another thing to declare it. And this is why the Bible says there are some, some seasons in your life that you're in such a place that you don't have any answers and you don't know what to do. And you go to the God and you, you, you think, Lord, I don't really know how to address this, or articulate to you. I don't know how to pray. The Lord says, that's all right. He said, I'm going to give you your language now. And you begin to speak in tongues. This is what Romans, the eighth chapter, is talking about. There are times where the Spirit of God will take control of you, and he begins to speak. What's this verse say? He begins to speak the mind of the Spirit. Allow, find a place as you're listening to me, those of you that have issues in your life and dilemmas and you don't in the natural see any solution, any resolution. And sometimes when we try to address these things in our own language, it just creates more unbelief. We just, you know, you start talking about God, this is what's wrong. This is how much money I need. This is how sick I am. When, you, when your ears are hearing what you're speaking, it just kind of, 
It overwhelms you. If you're not careful, you get in a spirit of unbelief. So the Bible says that sometimes the Holy Spirit will say, no, we, we need to pray in the mind of the Spirit. You don't need to be hearing what your problems are. You need to pray in the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost begins to speak solutions. Hallelujah. Begins to speak the answers in the Spirit of the Lord. And all of a sudden, in, in just a moment's time, there's something that happens. Some event occurs. Some person is moved on by God. And the impossible in your life is changed, hallelujah, by the moment of the Spirit of God. And so uh, I, I want to declare to you as suddenly, I want to declare over the body of Christ in this hour that there is a suddenly upon us, suddenly, hallelujah, there comes the language from heaven. And when we begin to speak the mind of Christ, when we think by him, this is what makes these heroes of faith that we read about that were so amazing. You know, they could look at somebody in a wheelchair and, you know, the natural mind says, oh, well, you know, they've been paralyzed their whole life. And they had the mind of Christ and they looked at them and they just saw somebody coming up out of the wheelchair. You know, they asked Jesus in the, in the Bible, the man who had been uh, lame from birth, uh, or blind, they said, Lord, who sinned this man or his parents? He said, neither one. He said, this happened because the Father's getting ready to be glorified. Never seen in his life. God speaks the word. What is he doing? He was speaking out of the mind of the Spirit. See, there are no limitations on the mind of the Spirit. This is why it's so important not only to have a prayer life, but to be able to pray in the language of the Holy Ghost because when you do, you begin to lose life. And so I want to encourage you, guard your tongue. Hallelujah. Guard your mouth. Ask the Holy Spirit, quicken to me the ability that, that death won't come out of me. Because we are the body of Christ, but our head, hallelujah, is, is Christ himself. And Christ only speaks life. He said, I have come to bring life and that more abundantly. So I hope this has helped you today. I pray that it'll get in your spirit and I bless you in the name of the Lord and I'll see you next week. For more information about Kent Christmas Ministries International or Regeneration Nashville, go to kentchristmas.org or regenerationnashville.org.